dear friends, colleagues and distinguished guests, good morning. My name is Hapte Hegos. I'm the founding member of Eritrea Focus and its current chair. On behalf of Eritrea Focus and the Institute of Commonwealth Studies, I would like to welcome you to this conference, Building Democracy in Eritrea. It's great to see you all, and I welcome you to our beautiful city, the best in the world, I like to think. <laughs> this conference has been organized in partnership with the Institute of Commonwealth Studies here at the University of London. I would like to thank everyone at the Institute and the Senate House for hosting us in this magnificent building, really a splendid building. I'd also like to express our gratitude to the National Endowment for Democracy based in Washington, D.C., which has generously supported the conference, allowing us to invite <coughs> so many of you from around the world. Thank you. Friends, Eritrea is at a crossroads. The peace deal signed with Ethiopia last year may have removed the threat of war, lifting a great weight from the shoulders of the nation. The partial reopening of the border crossings between the two countries has brought an increase in trade and allowed families to be reunited for the first time in decades. Why then, we ask, do so many Eritreans continue to flee the peace? The vast conscripted army trapped in indefinite national service has not been demobilized, despite the rapprochement <coughs> with Ethiopia. The dust may have been blown from the Ethiopian ambassador's residence in Asmara, but the population, our population, remains in the dark about the exact nature of the agreement negotiated between Prime Minister Abiy and President Isaias. The peace process is increasingly being seen by both Eritreans and Ethiopians as an agreement between two individuals rather than between two nation states. At the heart of the problem in Eritrea is the dictatorship. Deprived of the rights enshrined in the United Nations Charter, the Eritrean people are increasingly angry and frustrated. With the end of military threat from Ethiopia, many are asking, why does the road to democracy remain so emphatically blocked? Demands for change are heard on the streets of Eritrea's towns and villages and throughout the diaspora. <clears throat> Sadly, however, the people have not seen any sign of change in their constitutional rights nor their basic human rights, the very rights we take for granted here. Countless Eritreans continue to languish in unknown prison cells scattered across the country. These are our brothers and sisters. 
they remain in prison without the due process of law. Eritrea has indeed become a prison state for its own people. Progress is blocked by one man, President Isaias. Resistance is increasing, but one question remains. What will replace him and the clique that surrounds him when he has gone? One thing is for sure, we cannot allow a vacuum. The examples of Libya and Iraq are too painful and stark. We also know that we do not have a moment's waste. There is a real urgency and need to find a path to a better, brighter future for our people. One that it will give us the Eritrea for which so many of our brothers and sisters gave their lives to liberate. A country which we all long for. A country that is at peace with itself and its neighbors. Over the next two days, we will address these issues and many other pressing questions about the future of Eritrea. We will reflect upon how independence was won in 1991 <clears throat> and how freedom was lost. How recent wave of reconciliation throughout the Horn of Africa can be institutionalized and sovereignty guaranteed. What steps are required to rebuild a regionally integrated economy that can fuel growth and prosperity in the country? How to enshrine free speech and representation in a vibrant and diverse media environment? We'll consider the unresolved question of the Constitution and the milestones that must be passed, the milestones that must be passed in the transition to democracy. Democracy is not an overnight business. How to rebuild the shattered economy? How Eritreans in the country and throughout the diaspora can strengthen civic organizations and protect social and religious freedoms. The very fabric of Eritrean society that President Isaias has single-handedly destroyed over the last almost three decades. How can we engage with the international democracies to ensure recognition of the plight of Eritreans while safeguarding the primacy of Eritreans in deciding the country's future. In this regard, we have unfailing support of our, of our international friends, as you can see around this room. These are the very people, the very people who have steadfastly supported the Eritrean people through thick and thin. To you, my friends, I say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I know that between us, we have the experience, insight, and the imagination to tackle these questions. The papers for this conference will be brought together in a published form and made available to a wider readership. 
these papers, along with the conclusions of this conference, will form or will serve as a permanent record of what took place here over these two days. And they will also generate action points that we plan to progress over the coming months with the help of some of you. Task, really, that must be done. I'm sure you will be keen to speak with one another on the fringe of the conference, over dinner this evening, and at our post-conference reception tomorrow, when I hope to see as many of you as possible. We encourage you to take the most of the opportunity <coughs> you have to renew your old acquaintances, and cultivate new channels of communication and cooperation. Our hope is that these networks will grow beyond the conference, providing the basis for future meetings, workshops, and activities that feed into the process of change. Change is what we need. This is integral to, the, to our purpose here. We have amongst us many eminent academics and experts. But the subjects we are discussing are not purely academic. What we will discuss here has a bearing on questions that grow more urgent by the day. Only this month, we have seen, not too far from Eritrea, how long-standing dictatorships are brought down by relentless pressure from the streets. Since 2011, we have seen how precariously these moments hung in the balance if there is no system for a just, accountable, and peaceful transition to rule of law and eventual democracy. The current regime in Eritrea will fall. The current regime in Eritrea will fall. It's a question of time. The narrow foundation on which it is built, cannot sustain the weight of its misdeeds. The Eritrean government will fall. Are we ready? What is vital is that we lay the foundations of a democratic Eritrea. Our young people are saying, enough, enough. They've had enough. We must make their vision a reality so that one day we can all walk the sands of the Red Sea without fear and drink coffee in Asmara without looking <coughs> over our shoulders. This conference is one step towards that goal. Thank you.